Hello and welcome, I'm Sim UK, and it is my goal to provide to you the most honest, fact-based, critical reviews on YouTube. If you find this review helpful, then please hit that like button, subscribe, and help to support the channel by donating via the links below. Thank you so much, and enjoy the review. Microsoft Flight Simulator 20, or version 2.0, whatever you want to call it, is set to become the most inclusive flight simulator that's ever been released. While still promising to deliver feature-rich next-gen flight models and never-before-seen levels of detail. It is unheard of for a hardcore simulator to accommodate the needs of casual gamers to the extent that is proposed here, and exactly how seamlessly all of this will stitch together remains to be seen. What is clear, however, especially with the casual difficulty options in the game and the deals that are available on the Xbox Game Pass, is that we can expect to see an influx of brand new flight sim participants arriving in bulk. But what's the best controller to deliver the required level of flight sim experience for these new players? That's what I'm going to discuss in detail today, and whilst this video is directed towards those new to flight simulation, there might well be some interesting details and ideas suggested along the way for those of you perhaps looking for an upgrade to your existing rig. So, I have ordered each section and their related devices into what I believe to be a recommended progressive order. Let's assume that you're starting out with an Xbox controller, but you're looking for more immersion. Well, the most common and often the cheapest option is to grab a joystick with feedback vibration. Now that is not force feedback. That really doesn't exist in flight simulation anymore. These sticks are pretty cheap. They extend the simulation feel for any simulation and they are often pretty good bang for your buck. But not all devices are created equal. So please make sure you do some research and watch some review videos before you buy. Although throttle levers or sliders are often included with these budget options, at some point you're going to want to consider buying something with a real throttle quadrant. The cheapest, and in my humble opinion, one of the best purchases that I ever made was a combined HOTAS. They won't usually provide the high quality feel that the more expensive devices do, but the addition of a throttle can absolutely transform your flight simulation experience. Now these devices often lack the vibration feedback that you find in the cheaper versions, and they also tend to be a combined unit, which means they cannot be separated. The Yaw Axis, or rudder, is often on a digital rocker switch, which means that you won't necessarily get the finesse that an analog-styled axis would offer you. But you will definitely benefit from the feel of a real throttle quadrant. That one little change alone can amplify your flying experience completely. Full HOTAS units comprise of two separated parts, the joystick and the throttle unit. They will provide a huge leap in terms of immersion and functionality. Almost all HOTAS systems include a grip twist yaw control, and with more buttons than you know what to do with, this dual action multifunctional sim rig having such a small footprint means that you can actually start progressing towards your own full on sim rig, but this is where it can get very expensive, as it can more than double the price. All HOTAS devices tend to be aimed at combat simulation, but they are equally effective for flying GA and commercial jets. If you do buy one of these devices, it will likely cover pretty much all bases for the foreseeable future. But please do do your homework as they vary considerably in both price and in quality. For a more premium feel, then you'll need to consider dedicated modular systems. Pretty much everything you need to fly can be found on just the joystick or side stick device. So whilst this option initially costs less than a full HOTAS controller, and it delivers a far more premium feel to the joystick, you may have noticed the lack of a throttle quadrant. These modular systems are intended to scale. Additional hardware devices can be bought at a later date, further expanding on your sim rig and further enhancing your sim experience. They tend to be dedicated throttles, a single engine, a multi-engine and even a multi-single engine component can allow you to expand your rig at a pace which suits you, making it a much bigger and longer term investment, but it does deliver a much bigger sense of immersion.
You might already think you know exactly what sort of aircraft you will spend most of your time flying, but until you get into that special plane that makes you feel right at home, then you don't really know for sure. So choosing a joystick over a yoke is a decision that you might not yet be ready to make. Cytec were leading the way with fully immersive flight simulation gear for years. They were untouchable in terms of functionality and price. And whilst now they are owned by Logitech, they are still used widely across the flight simming world, including by me. If Microsoft Flight Simulator 20 does not fully support Cytec at launch, there will be hell to pay. The price of equipment significantly jumps from here, potentially into the thousands per item. And it is only really recommended for the elite and dedicated few. But if you shop around and even consider second-hand options, some great deals can still be found. Now, some people will have not only the money, but also the necessary space to build something considerably more realistic than anything that I have discussed so far. This step is just way out of my own reach. So like you, I am looking on in awe. Dedicated custom cockpits are impressive, but you can do something with your own rigs to gain that extra level of immersion for a lot less. There are desk mounts and basic stands. These allow you to pack up and unpack with relative ease, ensuring that everything is pretty much exactly where you left it. It gets even more immersive with sim rigs, butt kickers, and even feedback suits. And there are also some two or three way motion rigs that can be used and not only for flight simulation. Oh yes, and then there's this guy. Yeah, I know. One day, my precious. One day. Thank you so much for watching. I am SimUK. I plan on getting my own full sim rig out of storage and hooking everything up in the coming weeks. So please do keep an eye out for my flight sim rig tour, which has taken me a good four years to accumulate. And I'd rather not discuss about how much it's cost me. I actually have two sim rigs at the moment. So uh, there'll probably be two videos or I'll combine them into one. But please let me know in the comments below what you're thinking of buying, what you already have and what you're planning on getting in future. Or if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section and I will do my absolute best to answer them for you. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Until next time, goodbye.